I swear someone comes into my room and messes up my pillows. Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. I am making sure that all my stuff is on mute, or at least silence for a little while. Um, I've changed some things. Let me know how the audio sounds because I'll walk you through it in a little bit. I should have like an auto ducker going on and I have better control of like my mic versus the music. I do have to work some things out because I can't really hear the stream. That's where you guys come in. Um, so you just let me know. Uh, ideally, uh, things are cool. Let me catch up with you guys because you've been hanging out for a bit. Kyle salted his um, sidewalk. I saw that. <laughs> Robots running. Yes. Harley Bob. What's going on, Harley? Thanks for coming and hanging out. <laughs> Kyle's calling out the robot. Uh, Ken's here. What's up, Ken? Uh, Garan. Garan? Garin? Garin? Garan? I'm gonna go with either one of those. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Where are you at with the salt? I'm in upstate New York. We just get snow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kyle and I are both in, uh, central or northern New Jersey, whichever you call it. Literally, we're, like, midline. Like, look at New Jersey. <laughs> right in the middle. Uh, beep, beep, boop, 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 DJ Big Red's here. What's up, bud? How are you doing? Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, Kyle's already taking stuff back. Dan. Dan's here with beer. Thanks for coming and hanging, bud. Um, where is... He's late. He's with the motion. When he shows up, everybody's got a ride. Ride. Ugh. When he shows up, everybody's got to, like, rip into him. Because... He knows what's going on. So, how's everybody doing? Um, I figured we'd have a, a little bit of fun today. I gotta hide all this. That's why I'm wearing the hat. <clears throat> there he is. Oh. You've been here, but you haven't been chatting. How the heck am I supposed to know you're here? Huh? <laughs> In case anybody's curious, Blackberry Tangerine this evening. It wouldn't be a stream if I didn't have a fizzy, and it wouldn't be a stream if I didn't uncontrollably burp within that um so yeah you know what let's dive right in i want to show you guys how i set up like an auto ducker and my new new signal path for this microphone um it, and it's it's definitely interesting i have to make sure because before if i didn't have studio one running before we started these shows no big deal this just went to my interface and a separate output went to you guys but when i did that i wasn't able to it goes through the UAD Luna, or not Luna, the UAD console software. I need to move that. Um, it goes through the UAD console software, and the UAD actually doesn't have built-in side chaining, so I couldn't like be able to hit play, have it trigger a compressor on this mic to squish it all down. So I had to do it all in Studio One, and we'll get into that setup real quick in case you guys are curious how to maybe do it yourself. We'll get into that. Then we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do some drum programming, and then. We'll, we'll do something really relatively quick and easy. There it is. Um, we'll do something relatively quick and easy in our drum programming, and then we'll we'll break it out into multi-track audio, which uh, I know a number of people have been asking me about. And there's a few different ways to to uh, achieve that. So we'll try and hit as many as we can. If you have suggestions, put them in the chat, and we'll kind of catch up with them. Um, also, if you have questions, put them in the chat. We'll catch up with everything. Also, I need your, your guys' help. You guys can see this number. This is uh, actually a, a relatively inaccurate number of subscribers. I need to update this little ticker thing. Um, I'm very close to 7,000 subscribers. So if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you, you know, want to help spread the word, let's get me past 7,000. That'd be awesome. Let's catch up with you guys and then we'll get into Studio One. Uh, this is where we were blaming Music to Motion for not being here, even though he was. Sure he was. Uh, let's see. Shinerbach? Yes. Shinerbach approved. Um, I don't really drink as much these days, but when I did, uh, Shinerbachs, they were nice. So, enjoy it. Let's see, DJ Big Red. We're setting up all your gear. So you had it. <laughs> so all you had to do was sit down. Yep. But he didn't. Uh, let's see music motion. Can I do this with the 192 without 
doing a second event interface, I really want to get some tutorials together. Yes, the 192 has a loop back. And the only thing with the 192, the, uh, the 192 has loop back, um, but I can't remember if the 192, and I'm not a full expert on all their stuff. Um, <clears throat> the 192 has loop back and that'll allow you to like dump it back into OBS on the same machine. I use two machines, which is why I have different outputs and blah, 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 blah. So it's a little bit different, but the 192 should let you, should be good for like getting stuff set up to do streaming in OBS. Uh, let's see, I downloaded the full thought into my head so I can blast back with words Tim don't know. Tim no word good all the time. <laughs> yep, 6,975, I think, was where we were at not too long ago. So we can get past uh, the 7,000 tonight. That would be cool. It's only 25. It's no big deal. No, the 182 does not have loopback. Both JG and Jill. Okay. Like I said, I'm not an expert, man. I'm not an expert. Let's dive in and I'll show you my chain for auto duckers and things like that. And then we'll do some drug programming. So here we are, we're in. You guys will see immediately, here's this red channel that you can see. And it looks like it's doing some crazy stuff. Um, but this is just, it's almost like a return channel. Um, but let me show you this, which I, this is a new keyboard shortcut for me. And look at that. I thought ahead, I turned the keyboard shortcuts on and I made the mouse big. Um, I've mapped um, Alt or Option on a Mac, because that's what I am. I'm on a Mac. Option and F3 turns on uh, <laughs> way too many of those. And it also po pops open my inputs. Uh, just sub. Thank you. Thanks for the subs, guys. Uh, your mic is clipping, making weird noises. And it's probably because of this. So what I'm going to do is go to here whoop, and just drop that down. So that should be better for you guys. And I don't want it to pop too much. I do want it to be consistent. That's why I'm using some of these things. Um, but yeah, like the feedback like that, Mojadin, which Mojadin, what up, dude? Um, that that's, that's the feedback I need because this is a new setup and I need to kind of hone it in. You guys are going to help me. Um, so this is a keyboard shortcut I did. Option at F3 gives me my inputs. And then I actually did option at F4 shows the outputs, which are hidden right now because of the inputs. And they're just buried under there. Uh, so there's the outputs to going to you guys. That can go away. Inputs. So this is my new chain. This is directly on the input. So if I was actually recording, get that out of there, uh, it would print all of this to the file. But because I'm just monitoring and that's sending to you guys, so first things first is I threw just a, the lightest little expander on here. This way, when I'm not talking, it just pushes some of the noise. Sometimes I, I've, you guys have said that you've heard like some fan noises and things like that. Um, so little expander, just pushing things down. I have a video on expander on um, the this expander. So check that one out. Um, this is followed by the fat channel. And the fat channel is doing what looks like a fair amount of compression, which it actually shouldn't be doing that much. Um, I do want it to be relatively even. Um, it's also doing a little high pass. It's not... I don't know why this is on. This shouldn't be on. But we're going to... Eh. I think I was experimenting and, and forgot to turn it off. Um, I also threw the limiter on, but this is really for like super duper peaks, which I'm never even going to hit with this one. It's just a safety net. So I'm doing a little bit of compression on here. This is followed by a limiter. So this is, it's, it's both a compressor and a limiter. I'm getting a little bit more gain reduction here, but it really is keeping it very stable and like where I want it. And then I'm, this is going to be like my master output gain right here. So this kind of keeps things level for me. And then I have the compressor, and this looks ridiculous. The threshold is all the way down. The ratio is all the way up. It's a super hard knee, fastest attack, really slow release. This is the one that is getting side-chained. Oops. Uh, well, it would be getting side-chained from my mix bus, but I don't have a mix bus in here. So let's go ahead and make one. We'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Oh, I was hitting the wrong button. That's why. So this will be my mix bus. If I had stuff going on, then it would be uh, going through here, and this would trigger the compressor. Beep. 
so then if I was playing anything, it would just crush this vocal down. And what you hear in my room that the microphone would be hearing wouldn't affect what's going to you guys. I have to mess around with this. I have to fine tune it a little bit, but that's essentially what is going on. Uh, let me catch up with you guys a little bit. Uh, just letting you know the right side click is still there. Not as bad as last week. Uh, yeah, I think I've fixed it since you, you guys typed that. Your mic is clipping, making weird noise. I, again, I think I fixed it. I'm gonna, I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm catching up. Uh, yeah, the right hand side, I know it's my converter. I need a better video converter. I'm gonna replace this one soon. Um, so, uh, I, I'm just, I'm still doing research on, on better ones. Um, well, actually what I may do soon is actually make a, a little NDI network in here, but that's video stuff. You guys don't need to worry about that. This is an audio channel. Let's go back to audio. Um, <clears throat> let's go like this, just so I, I can talk to you guys real quick while we're doing this. Yeah, the clipping. Let me know if it's still clipping. It shouldn't be. Uh, better, smoother sounding. Cool. Yeah, I want it to be like nice and consistent when I talk to you guys. If it pops, it's my fault. Exactly. Um, I can reduce it a bit. Yes, I believe I have. Uh, but, uh, the rug rat on a beer run smart this is all for the current vocal stream yeah uh it, this is going to be for future streams and actually for future videos this is going to be my new vocal chain to be able to because even when i do like the produced videos for you guys i have to cut out a bunch of stuff and sometimes there is interference of playback into the mic so this chain should alleviate that sounds pretty good thus far yeah oh smacked into the table <laughs> Uh, all groovy here in Australia. Australia, welcome, dude. 210 Saturday. That's not bad at all, man. Thanks for coming and hanging out. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, I'm catching up. Hang on. Uh, I've always wanted to visit. Uh, we should. Uh, I had the same gain reduction plugin. Love it. Yes, the gain reduction from JST. Uh, J Joey makes awesome stuff. Um, so this is the Joey Sturgis Tones. This is the original gain reduction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or the gain reduction deluxe. I can't remember. Um, he does have a newer version of this that I don't have, but this one is awesome. Especially if you do like aggressive vocals, this thing's killer. Uh, boop, 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 sounding good. Cause music to motion set it all up for me. Yep. You know, I really have to blame music to motion for pretty much everything that happens here. <laughs> Matthew Jones, you're doing a good job. Thanks for coming and hanging out, bud. Uh, I have to vlog him at times so he listens. Sometimes, yes. Mango Man! What's up, Mango? How you been? Uh, let's see, just finished up a minute meditation track. Very nice. Ready to do a bit of mixing. Nice. Oh, a nine minute meditation track. Very different from a one minute meditation. It's about nine times as different. Boo. <laughs> Uh, you should reduce the gain a little bit more and put the mic closer. Uh, I can. It, it's really, it's kind of because I, I move around a lot. Um, that's for you, Marjorie. Uh, boop, 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 boop. What was that? Plug in again. Oh. You see? You see, you try and please, try and please, you try and appease everyone, and everything just falls apart. Music to motion, this is your fault. I want you to know that. Everyone blame music to motion. Uh, that was <laughs> Joey Sturge's tones, gain reduction. This is the original one. Um, he has a new version of this one out uh, called uh, Gain Reduction Two. Never would have guessed, right? It's the sequel. Um, Joey Sturge's tones. And honestly, on like a bunch of the discounts, um, plug-in places, let me open this up again. Here, sorry, I forgot I was doing that. Uh, Joey Sturgis Stone Gain Reduction. This is the original, there's a new version. And this one in particular, you can usually get for about 30 bucks on some of the discount um, sites, or even through them, they, they have been putting this on sale relatively recently. It's awesome. Aggressive vocals through this, really cool. It's got a built-in lo-fi switch, so it's, you know, EQ filters. Um, and basically the way that it works, um, you can drive your input up here. This is your bypass button over here. Slay is the amount of gain reduction you'll get, and I'm not going to mess with it here because if I crank this, you'll hear I will just, my vocal will get slammed and it will be ridiculous. 
and we're not going to do that right now. Gain is essentially your output. Um, there is a little mark on here. That's that guy right there, which is essentially like unity gain. So you can back it off and you can bump it up. Body is another EQ. This um, I forget where this is centered around, um, but if you do a lot of aggressive vocals, it, there is like this low mid buildup. So you can use this control to actually reduce some of that um, extra buildup that happens with aggressive vocals. Um, so you, it's, it's basically like a uh, built-in EQ. You can just kind of scoop out the lower mids a little bit. And then there's a built-in mix knob. So you can do some parallel stuff on this. And then uh, you can also change the meter up here to be input, output, or gain reduction. So yeah, check it out. Uh, there in the links below this video, there should be a, a link to one of those um, plug-in discount um, I forget if it's either plugin discounts or plugin boutique or um, plugin fox. There, there's there's links down in the description of some uh, they're, they're affiliate links. I'm going to say it. So if you use them uh, a little bit comes back to me and that's a way for you guys to support the channel. We've been talking about so much other stuff that's not drum programming and that's kind of what we're here to do. I'm going to catch up real quick. Oh, OK. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, bit of a... Mango Man says he's going to buy a Studio Live 32S. Very cool. Um, we did the plugin. We just did that. LOL. Oops. Ha ha ha. Wrong plugin. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, uh, which, which, oh, was I going on about gain reduction? Or is that not the right one? Uh, that's why he keeps the mic at a distance. Yes. Well, also, my hair is getting ridiculous, so I decided to wear a hat today because I haven't done my hair at all. I hate it when it gets all floppy. Don't we all? Game Reduction Dog is on sale for 19 bucks. See, DJ Big Red put it in the chat that it's right right now. It's 19 bucks. Uh, Game Reduction 2 is for 50 bucks right now. So Game Reduction 2 has some extra things built in. Obviously, that's why they made a new version of it um, that I need to do a little bit more research on because I use this one and it's good for me. So, oops. Oh, what did I do? Not what I meant to do. Wrong computer. Uh, what does this VST do? The one we were just talking about is a, it's a gain reduction. That's, it's, it's a really heavy compressor limiter. Um, so it's, it's good for like heavy screamy vocals, but honestly, I know a few guys that do like light, easy vocals or country vocals and they've used that still just really nice. It's a really good, it's, it's, it's built for like vocals. Uh, originally it was designed for heavy vocals, but you can really use it on anything. Uh, you're great for live shows that people see. We're all just human. No, I am Robit. You guys have seen stream stream Robit. He he, I am Robit. Come on, love to hear what you are doing. I'm working on the same type of stuff right now. I'll share with you. Oh, look at that. See, everybody's making friends. Uh, yes. Get into the demo. We'll continue to chat in the background. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Let's do some drums. Um, let's pull open an instrument. Let's do some drums. You know what I'm going to do? Only because I don't really do it. Mm. No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with my buddy Dan Corneff. He's got the Coded 19 drums. He's also got Back to School. And I'm I'm using Coded 19 for a reason. Uh, and that's because when, I, when you view the mixer, there's very few channels. And I just want to be able to go in and break this stuff out into different channels. Don't mind that it's thinking. I hope it doesn't crash, because then we're going to go silent. And that would be bad. You would think I would prepare this stuff beforehand. Don't you even start with that cowbell stuff. You got the wrong show, bud. <laughs> uh, Mojadin drums uh, are two mainstream. Yes, cowbell and spider sound. <laughs> You guys are going on about the cowbells again. I don't care. You can go on about cowbells. <laughs> I just saw it pop up and I figured I'd yell at you. Come on, Studio One. Load this drum instrument. I mean, I can see this meter going. Yeah, there it goes. <clears throat> Took a minute. Um, here's the exact reason why I'm using this one. That's for me, don't worry. I'm going to fix it for you guys. I'm going to open up the mixer. Everything's going through outputs one and two. 
and the second half of what we're doing in our demo today is actually printing these drums out. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna change all of these outputs to different stereo pairs, which this one is awesome because it gives you more stereo pairs than you need. Um, but I mean, it's easy to make 16 outs um, and not use all of them because when programming is just binary, you know, 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All, all the divisible by eight essentially is what's going on. Here's the parallel chain. I think this is where the presets are. Uh, yeah, let's just pull open one of Dan's uh, metal drums, because yes. Uh, you do boop boop. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'm going to change it for you guys, because let's do this expand my drums because right now I'm only seeing uh, one and two. Oops. Oh my goodness. Big mouse. Okay, here we go. I'm just going through. Shift click to do that color my drums what I like. Uh, so I know that all of the outputs are here. And over here in the track list is just my my MIDI section, which why am I looking at seconds? I forgot to change that. Um, I'm going to change my quantize to eighth notes because we'll start like that. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, how about a nice tambo? Sure, I could do it. I could work with the tambo. Tambos are nice. Uh, there's no show that is excluded from cowbell. I know. Nice beach ball. That's okay. It was thinking. It was thinking. It was thinking. Uh, didn't you say during Johnny's stream that Tim was going to sing a country song with cowbells for us during the stream? You have got the wrong Tim. Oh, my cowbell. No. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. See, I'm here to entertain. I'm, I'm here to be silly. But I'm here to program drums. Um, these things, you guys all need to go to the mix bus. And now, when I open this guy up, you should be hearing... Don't mind the clips there. I don't care. But levels going to you guys look good. Sound good? <laughs> it's a hit. <laughs> you're not gonna be you're not gonna be happy with you know, what what we were just doing, being silly with one another with what we're about to do. Let's get into these drums. Let's do it. All right. I'm just gonna make. Uh, let's go with, uh, an eight bar loop, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Duh. It gives you the numbers. <laughs> and for you guys, I already have this thing mapped out. So let's make this nice and big. Um, I'm going to make a video soon on how to make these drum mappings. Um, because I know some people are asking it. Um, okay. Drum programming tips. Let's get into some cool stuff. Let's say I'm going to change my quantize over to a quarter note, which I forgot that I have these things set to keyboard shortcuts. So, uh, option and three, or excuse me, control and three on a, uh, on my Mac keyboard, uh, and control and four change me from, um, Oh, it's doing it up here. It's not linking. Here we go. Um, it's changing my quantize value. So uh, currently it's at eighth notes, which is, um, excuse me, control and four for me. Control and three is quarter notes, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, when you're programming drums, being able to go in and quickly change your quantize amount is going to be a helpful thing. So maybe map that to your keyboards on something that you haven't done. Uh, Tim likes to read the chat too much. Yeah, because of you guys. Uh, he's trying to come up with a new genre. Country, metal, and one. No, it already exists. 
So, ready? Quick, easy count off. Because everybody needs a count off when they're playing drums, right? Cool. I'm holding command on my keyboard. It would be control on a PC. I am currently set to quarter notes. You can see my mouse has changed. Oh, I forgot about that key. Ooh, that'll be fun. <clears throat> my mouse has changed to what looks like a drumstick because we're in uh, the drum mode here. So we're in drum view. That's why we're going to see flags. And I just click, held, and dragged out. If I really wanted, I could go crazy and just, I'm now full of open hi-hats. Okay, I'm just going to undo that real quick. This key, so what I'm doing is I'm holding command and option on me, my keyboard, which on a PC would be alt and control. This is like a flam. So you look down here, the velocity is way higher. So it maxed out the velocity because our normal velocity going in is 80%, which we probably don't need. But if we do the accented hit, which is the command and option or control and alt on a PC, it's going to give us harder hits. So if we change this down to 60%, we've done that there, and I put a hit in here, you can see the, let me move this, you can see the velocity is at 60%. Over here, 180, right? Let's put a flammed hit here, or not a flammed hit, an accented hit here. Full blast. Cool? So if you really want to, like, push onto something, you can do an accented hit, and it's basically full blast on your velocity. Are we learning? Yes? Cool. Uh, our tempo is 160, and we're in 4-4. Four, four. Not that it really matters, and not that anything happens, because music to motion knocked that over. It was totally him. So here's our count in. And of course, if you're going to start a song, you smash it with the china, and you hit the heck out of that thing, and you also go to some kind of crash symbol. I want to find something. So the china is, uh, right now, we're in drummer perspective, so the china's on the right, and when I play drums. Uh, uh, so control and alt plus click on PC. Yes, if you're looking to do that accented hit, you hold those two, control and alt, and then that changes your uh, that changes your mouse, and you get this with the little swoop, swoopy lines. Um, you get the little swoopy lines, and that's your accented hit. So that is holding alt and control plus clicking on a PC. So, you know, I can move the mouse around. It's not going to do anything. But when I click or click and hold and drag, now all of my ride symbols, these are all accented hits. Just going to undo that real quick. That crash sounds like it's a little bit more to the left. That crash is definitely on the left. So we're going to smash that one. We have our China, and then we're going to hit way too hard because it's the start of the song, and we're all excited. See? We are learning stuff. Music to motion, accenting hits. So uh, let's just grab these guys, and we're going to bring them down. There's going to be a count in. So, you know, we eyeballed that to, what is that? I think 60%, something like that. Where are you? What? Yeah. Yeah, 60%. Close enough. We eyeballed it. So now in our count in, don't mind that it cut off. That Again, my computer, this VST, or this drum just on my machine, that's why it cut off like that. If you had this on your machine, it wouldn't do it. I swear to you, it wouldn't. It's Again, it's just my machine. So now that we've done this intro, we can start figuring out what we're going to do. Do we want to start right into like a heavy kind of, you know, intro thing? You know, I, I'm generally like a hard rock, heavy metal kind of guy. So that's what I'm going to go for. So with this, I'm going to hit the China. I'm going to hit my crashes and my kick drum all at the same time. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what the pattern of the song is. We're really just kind of starting from scratch here. So we can kind of make it whatever we want. Um, if you wanted something ridiculous, let's go to eighth notes. And we're just going to 
we're going to hit the mic with our hat, and we're just going to throw in a bunch of kick drums. Because why not? This is, let's say it's metal, right? So you go over here, we go back to our quarter notes. Again, these are my keyboard shortcuts. That's why it is control and three and control and four on my Mac keyboard. If you guys want to map it to something on your keyboard, you totally can. Um, at this point, after we've hit the crash, we're going to, or excuse me, the China, we would go to a different crash symbol. And I know crash three is on the right hand side. So uh, from here, starting on beat two, because beat one has this big hit of everything, beat two is going to be our quarter note hits. Right? So now we've really done this real fast. We've got our eighth note kicks. We've got our quarter note crashes. We're making it up as we go along. Now we need to figure out what's going on with our snares. Uh, maybe we want this to be just kind of like a four. You can do something like that. Four. And then we'll do one measure where the hit is going to come in on the three, almost a halftime kind of thing. And we can kind of just, oops, we can kind of just duplicate that real quick. I don't know. Shifted way over there. I'll just drag it over. Not a big deal. Duplicate. So, super duper basics. Common time, snares on two and four. Half time, snare on three. Same tempo, nothing has changed, but the feel will change. Let's take a listen. The only thing that changed there was the snare drum, <clears throat> which we actually, you know, um, <clears throat> Tommy Lee four on the floor kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we could do we could do that as well. We're back on our kick drums. Let's do four on the floor for two measures. Hang on, scroll. Why are you not scrolling? There you go. I held shift while I was doing that. Um, and let's do the same thing. Four on the floor. Do, just do it again, and we'll get uh, you there. Actually, it's going to be easier to just get rid of those and just draw in. Um, it's going to be here. So same kind of thing, um, but we'll change it up. This is really like thinking like a drummer. How can you change the feel of something? Let's go with hi hats on this, and I'm going to go eighth note hi hats. Again, it's ridiculous because we're just kind of really rapid firing these things in and all of our velocities are exactly the same on all of these hits. This is drum programming. The, a robot's going to do it exactly right all the way through. Uh, so that's why that's doing that. Um, let's make a transition real quick and we'll do uh, some kind of crash symbol, which there's down here. So we're going we're gonna to accent that crash because why not? And you know what? these two and we will accent those ones so now we're changing it up again we were using our accent notes on the four <clears throat> the beat four excuse me of measures six and seven and then um, let's go ahead and erase this one I'm just holding command on the keyboard and I get the eraser tool because that's what's uh, it's like the secondary tool for the smart tool. Holding down command and alt. So that would be control and alt for PCs. Accented hits. Let's start this song over. right there a bunch of different feels let's go back to measure six where you can hear the snares hitting a little bit differently like you can hear two uh two is hitting not nearly as hard as beat four and very quickly we're at 160 i'm just gonna eyeball this way down like much slower now but because i just did that with the scroll wheel 
and it's MIDI, it's locked to the tempo. So it doesn't matter what the tempo is. It's It knows bar one, or excuse me, bar six, beat one, hit these notes, right? <clears throat> you just gave me a new idea. I'm glad to hear that, Walt. Um, so now here's, here's the same thing again. We went from 160 to 106. And you can you can see, and now you're really gonna hear, especially when we get to bar six, listen to the snares. On two, it's a hit. On four, it's a harder hit, okay? That's bar six. So we're slower now. Same patterns, nothing has changed. Let's go. Did you guys hear it? We're gonna go very close to bar six. Really listen to that snare versus that snare. And you can hear it now. It's a lighter hit, doesn't have as much smack. Maybe the tone is a little different. Boom. Boom. The, the note is a little bit lower because of the velocity, it's, it's pushing a little bit harder. Let's listen to the, just the second half again, real quick at this slower tempo. Cool, are we learning things? Awesome, it seems like we are. Very nice, got it. Perhaps throw a rim shot on the accents. Yeah, you certainly could. You, you can do a lot of different accent things here. Also, this kit that I'm using has two different snare drums. Um, depending on which drum kit you guys are going to use, maybe you have a rim shot, maybe you have uh, the, the, uh, the, the tambourine. We're not going to say the, the cow-related percussion thing. But there's a lot of different things. Uh, this one doesn't have a rim shot, if I remember correctly. It does not. I'm clicking around. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, right, this is everything that it has. So snare one, snare two. But when you, I think, programmed into this drum is exactly that. Like if we were just going to solo out uh, the snare drums. Full velocity is more of the uh, rim shot. And you can hear it because it's got more snap to it. It's got more click to it. You can hear it. It's hitting hard. It's smacking that rim with the stick. That's the rim shot. It's not like but um different kind of thing. Okay. <clears throat> but when you're doing your drum programming, and this will probably be the last thing that we do, and then we'll go into how to break this out into uh, different, uh, you know, a few, a, a couple different ways on how to break this out to different um, audio files. That's the next thing we're going to get into. Uh, this is this is robotic. This is awful. Like all of these velocities are the same except for like our our accent hits, but like these hi hats here. This is how you can really tell, excuse me, this is how you can, there it is, really tell that this is programmed drums because it's just ta, 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 like nothing changes about these hats. It's probably sampled of different hits, but the velocity is all relatively the same. If you were using something else, you might only have one sample and that hi-hat is just gonna be da 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 it's, it, That's the robotic part of programming. But you can kind of screw that up and make it more human. If you go into action, and I just have the hi-hat selected right now, I'm gonna go to humanize. This is where we can add velocity or take away velocity. So right now I have it set to minus 17 or plus 18. So it's giving me a big variance uh, or a big volume or velocity discrepancy between the notes. And it, this is the range of the changes it can make for the velocities. It can either 
go down 17% or it can go up 18% or anywhere in between. That's the range that it can use. So some of these notes might stay exactly the same. Some of them might get turned down. Some of them might get turned up and it is pretty much random, which is cool. And then the next one is the add note start range. This allows you to actually offset the time or the, uh, for the start of these notes. Now we're in the drum mode. So it's just the little flags, but if you um, were doing humanized things on like a synth pad or something like that, you would see that MIDI start note kind of shift a little bit more in your MIDI editor in the edit window. Here you'll see it a little bit too. I mean, we were just literally putting everything onto the grid, but with these settings, watch what happens. Let's just scroll over a little. It doesn't want to. Pay attention to the velocities down here, and we're going to watch all these notes shift just a little bit. Ready? Beep. So the notes may or may not have shifted. Really, the note start shift was so small, but sometimes those little timing variances makes your program drums sound a little bit more realistic. Let's go over a little, and we'll take a listen. So there's a little bit more kind of feel to these hi-hats. It's not just the same sample all the way through. And we, you know, let's see this top note. Let's see if I can hover over it. Um, it's now it was at 60%. Now it's at 74%. So this one went up where this one next to it is down to 54.5%. I know you guys probably can't see this. This is why I'm saying it out loud for you. But that volume discrepancy, like that's a big change between 54.5 and 74%. It's a big change. It makes it sounds like someone was actually playing it. You can do the same thing for all of your other hits. We can go in, action, humanize, same exact thing. It might shift the start times a little as well, but the volume discrepancies. Um, this will alter the accented notes a little bit, but we can always just take those and crank them all the way up again. Or we can just get out of that. Oops. And uh, holding shift will add or remove the selection. So let's take everything but our accented notes. Humanize. So there. I don't know if you guys saw that. Watch this note. This guy right here. Ready? The one I'm hovering over. I'm just going to undo real quick. This guy right above me. Boop. The timing changes ever so slightly. I'm going to Command Shift Z to redo. That tiny little movement makes it a little bit more human because it's not perfectly to the grid it is slightly off and an actual drummer at an actual kit isn't going to be perfect. They're going to be really good. If they're really good, they're going to be very close and probably for a lot of hits, they'll be dead on. But if you're slightly off, just a little, a little more human. Okay. Before we get into breaking this out to audio files, I'm going to catch up with you guys real quick. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at you guys. Blaze is here. Need more cowbell. Get out of here. All right. I got to go back up ah, kind of a bit. Okay. Here we go. I see Dan is very active. Walt is uh, Walt learning some new things. Um, Harley, was that the command? Uh, what was that? What was the command to duplicate? Um, you're talking, let's say we just want to grab everything that's in these bars. And I'm going to, I am going to grab that crash as well. D on your keyboard. Boop. Duplicate. Now it's only shifting off by a bar on my screen because of this extra hit here. If that didn't exist and it was all locked in, it would put it right on the bar. That's why it's weird here. Duplicate D. Then if you guys, uh, watched my most recent video going over the event icons, or even if you watched Gregor's. And it's really funny because Gregor reached out to me after my video came out because he's like, you must be reading my mind. He also put out uh, a video on the official PreSonus channel of the event icons. 
duplicate D. Duplicate shared, and I'm just going to do this real quick, is I'm going to cut my bar here. So here's another way to do it. Whoop. Uh, I just did a quick cut right here by double clicking. If I hit D, it puts it right on the bar, right? I'm going to undo if I hit Shift and D. Look at this guy. Look at his little ghost. Look at his little Pac-Man guy. No, he's not telling you it's time to play Pac-Man. He's telling you that it's a shared duplicate. So if I was going to change anything in this event, and I'm going to zoom in here. So if I go in and I delete this hi-hat, right? You see how it's selected over here as well? So I have this one. This is the one I clicked, but this one is also selected. And if I delete it, it does it to both because it's a shared duplicate. If I just did a standard duplicate, oops, this is what I mean to do. If I just do this and I go back and I find this hi-hat, it's not selecting any over here. And if I delete it, it only does this one. Cool? Cool. I'm glad we're all on the same page. Uh, let's get back to talking with you guys. Big open hi-hat here. When was the beat going? Uh, yeah, we could do that. I started as a drummer. Yep. I still am a drummer. It's in my heart. Can't get away from it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Um, also, I feel like I'm going kind of quick, and I'm sorry for that, guys. Uh, I never hit certain... Th never hit certain things in a DAW that a human wouldn't play. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. Impossible drums unless you have a third armor leg. Exactly. You have to think, like, how am I... How would a person hit these things? Would they hit it with their hands? Would they hit it with either one of their two feet? Um, because really, at any given time, you can only hit four things. Two arms, two legs. If you have five hits, the only way that to, that, that would work is if you're like stacking symbols, but quiet you. <clears throat> If you're stacking symbols, but then having stacked symbols isn't the same as hitting two symbols at the same time. It's very different because it gives you a different sound. It's a different sample, basically. Uh, just for grins, can you throw a splash on the accents on the snare on beat four? Maybe we can go back and do that. Uh, I gave Walt a new idea. Awesome. I like the off beats on the hats. Very cool. So for the kick, how would you emulate a real double kick setup? Each shell and head is different and different mic. If you're doing something like that, um, a lot of usually in the in the studio, like the dual kick thing looks great on stage. In a studio, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because you have to tune both of those kick drums exactly the same. You have to dampen them exactly the same. You have to have twice as many microphones that you're going to put onto that kick drum. So it in my opinion, if I was tracking a drummer who wanted to do double kicks, I would have them use a double pedal on a single shell. Yes, you can have drummers come in and they'll have double kicks, but you need to then take the time to tune them the same way, have the microphones be the exact same way, have them dampen the same way. And that's twice as much work, where if you just have a double pedal, it's chained over one drum, one shell, you're good to go. You tune once, you dampen once, you mic once, that's it. Um, cause it, once you start like throwing different microphones in and if they're not tuned the same, you're, you're gonna hear it. Perhaps there are rim shots on the accents. We did that. Yep. Automation velocity is the key to getting realistic sounds. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, not enough tonal change to make it pop. I'd roll it with the rim shot. There you go. There we go. A bit of a pickle listener then. Uh, needs more cowbell. Okay. But yeah. I'm, uh, GPA, human eyes. Yep. Your velocity, every hit, every hit, blah, blah, blah. Show that again, please. Dan, you'll have to let me know what you wanted me to show again. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you're seven hours behind. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. I'm falling apart. It is just about 11 p.m. here. Um, occasional part. Uh, yes, again, we're, we're really just scratching the surface at drum programming, but you can go in and put, like, uh, you know, a different kind of open hi-hat or a closed hi-hat or, you know, you want to accent on an offbeat on the splash or whatever you want to do. You know, some ghost notes on the snare. We didn't even touch into ghost notes, but we're not getting into that, really. Uh, 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 uh. Tim, do you know what is better than a cowbell? Two cowbells! Exactly. 
you want to duplicate several bars down how do you do that harley i think we went over that if i uh, if there's something else you want me to hit let me know and i'll get back into it can you show how to create some drum fills with toms that would sound banging on a four bar drop yeah we can do that in a second bye kyle have a good night uh agreed on the kicks you know uh how to humanize dan oh you want to see that okay yeah, yeah, yeah we can get into how to humanize good answer i was hoping you'd say double pedal but how would you emulate it um i can hear real kits recorded with double kick and even though tunes there's always a slight difference well there is a slight difference <clears throat> with okay let's say my ideal situation is there it's one it's a drummer he's got double pedal on a single kick drum but you have to think of the the shell of the drum and so you have some kind of circle let's just use this for example and i'm going to go big on this one if this is your kick drum and a normal kick drum pedal it's going to hit it right in the center kind of like this right it's going to be perfect it's going to be right in the center exactly where it should be hitting right when you have a double pedal it's like this and they're going to be offset so one might be hitting dead center but one is going to be off a little so you will get tonal differences with those two hits and that's how you get more of like that double kick pedal kind of sound because one is offset and isn't hitting the exact center of your kick drum it is now offset by just a little bit so it does produce a different sound ah. uh, ignore my questions and see what others want to know i'm just trying to give examples yeah uh, i believe you could if you choose to block the word cowbell from the chat uh, i could uh great answer on the double kick cool let's get back into it <clears throat> um I th well there was something humanize let's do humanize again before we do anything else let's go back over here to these double kicks right i've selected them all i did was click and drag I lassoed them right in the action menu when you drop this down you go to humanize by by default oh music to motion thank you for <laughs> thank you for the super chat for kicking you um you made me lose my spot action humanize in here by default, uh, if you've never used this before, I think everything is zeroed out. So you can mess around with these ranges. Um, so I I like this. I like having that volume difference between like, you know, instead of everything being exactly the same, maybe there's some soft hits, maybe there's some hard hits. Instead of making it like everything is just softer by a percentage, this gives me a nice big range. Maybe maybe they were hitting a little hard because they were happy on this hit who knows who cares so i go in and i do sometimes i've done minus 10 percent plus 10 percent apparently the last time i used it because these settings will retain after you've changed them and it doesn't matter what song you're in you you know you guys may have seen that i didn't change any of these things in here um, so this will retain from the last time you've made an, a, a change to your human eyes um settings so this is the this is what i used last time and honestly i'll probably leave it like this because i don't i don't want it to be too ridiculous but i do want it to have some um a, a decent range same thing for down here add note start range this is going to be this means it's going to be a, a couple microseconds <clears throat> i think this works in seconds uh there's gonna be a couple microseconds early or it's going to be a microsecond late millisecond it's going to be off the timing is going to be offset it's not going to be perfect on the grid so you don't necessarily need to do these uh for the timing um and even if you do have this on you can kind of undo it but keep the human human eyes in here so oops i hit it but my timing got messed up what am i gonna do action shift q restore timing that'll lock everything right back onto the grid shift q is the default um plug for that as well so i think my chair is gonna fall apart i don't know <laughs> um so my timing has been restored i'm now dead on the grid but 
uh, some of my hits are now have been humanized. Human home studio trainers here. What's up, dude? What's up, Johnny? Uh, let's see. We went over human eyes. What was the other one? So I'm going to come up a little bit. Uh, oh, Tom fills blaze wants to see some Tom fills. Yeah. Okay. So let's say, let's do some stuff. Let's listen. Let's listen to these last few bars again and we'll kind of Tom fill out of this. Also, let me go in here real quick. Whoop. Let's get that one out of here. Um, Johnny, you missed everything. This is what we have so far. And I'm going to speed it back up because why not? I'm just going to scroll that up. We were at 160. Let's do 140 because it doesn't matter. So let's do something because there's no crash. There's a crash symbol at bar six, which is hitting medium hard but it's not really like cutting through um so what we can do let's do a tom fill out of this so immediately i'm just going to get rid of my kick drums and i'm going to get rid of my snare drums uh, i'll leave the crash going uh for the first one and we're going to get rid of some of these and i am going to flip over to eighth notes and we'll do something really simple and We'll do something really simple and then we'll get to um, exploding this out to different audio onto different tracks. Um, so this one is actually backwards uh, where the high notes are lower. And let's try and use literally everything. So we're on bar five and you know what? I'm even going to go to 16th notes. Ready for this? Beep, beep. Boop, boop. I'm just going to hit everything. Really. Where's the other guy? There he is. There's the other guy. And then we still have a beat to do. So... These will, these will happen at the same time, right? We're eyeballing it. We're, we're, we're winging it. Um, this is our Tom fill. Let's go back to the beginning. Right? That's something. I could probably shift these over because I absolutely can. Let's grab those guys. Let's grab these guys. I held shift when I did that. Um, let's just start offsetting things by a weird kind of... I'm, let's just be ridiculous for that because we can, right? <laughs> Why not? That's our Tom Bill. And let's do another one real quick over here. Uh, we can leave. Let's just do it on beat four. So I have to think of where my hands are. It's not going to be on the hi-hats. It can be on the kick drum, that's fine. Which actually we can go back here and just do. Ready? This is gonna be, that tom fill is gonna be ridiculous now. You may not have heard it as much. Let's grab all those guys. We're having fun, right? And then let's just go to this guy. real quick actually put that back in i am going to change my quantize ready for this i'm going to go 16th note triplets because let's try and get more notes in 
makes no sense, but we're having fun, right? Oh, there we go. Why not? Who cares? My ducker is working very nicely. Yeah! I'm not hitting like until he adds the cowbell. There's no cowbell. <sighs> if this is going to make you like it, I'm going to reluctantly do it, but I'm going to find a sample because... Cowbell preset. You better give me that like now. <laughs> All right, let's go into one way to export this out. All right, so this is the greatest drum programming you've done in the entire world, right? And you're like, oh, I want to be able to process this. I've already split my tracks out because if we're looking here, still coming out of the kick because something got messed up oh oh i opened the preset remember that thing i did before i messed it up so i'm just very quickly fixing it okay now that things are correct go back there here we go now watch this is all going to get spread out over here and this is also why we check these things Right? Cool. Oh, cuz you get out of here. All right. So you've you've already split it out to different tracks, right? You can do all your things. Cool. But this is really taxing your system. Like it's not it like my my computer's old. It can't do all these things. Just print yourself some audio. You can do a few different things. Um you can go here, right click Transform to audio track, and you can render all channels so that these are all of your channels. You can render your inserts into those renders. We don't have any of that going on right now. Preserve instrument track state. This will allow you to kind of go back to a MIDI instrument and its current state, and it's not really going to hurt to have this on, so this is one way to do it. Remove instrument is will literally just take the instrument away to stop using DSP and on your machine. I'm going to turn that off because we can just deactivate it over here. And then um, auto tail is if there was like reverb or stuff going on in here. Um, it's got rooms. Uh, so let's just add a tail in 30 seconds is ludicrous. Let's go with even four is too much. Let's go two seconds. And we're back. Okay. So what it's done is it's made all of these new tracks for us. Here's our kick. Here's our snare. Here's our toms. And look, it's already going to my mix bus because that's where these guys were going. And it's deactivated the MIDI instrument. Or it's like just not showing it. But now that I've hit play, it's only playing out of the audio track. So now we have bounced our drums. <clears throat> DJ Big Red, you give me that like, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is one way to do it, right? That's one way 
to do it. Um, let's see what happens when I hit undo. And uh, uh, you can go back and go transform to instrument track. You can always send it back. That's why on the event, it's showing you the MIDI lines. It's, it's a rendered audio and it's not referencing the MIDI instrument anymore, but it retains the information. That's transforming. Hooray, undo. If we hit play, the MIDI instrument is back. That's one way to do it, is transforming to audio track. Another way to do it, export your stems. If you do your export stems and you turn only the ones you want on, so like kick, snare, toms, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is another way to do it. But with this, you can't revert back to your MIDI instrument. DJ Big Red, he gave me that like. High five, bud. High five. Come on. Yeah, I felt that. I appreciate that. <laughs> so when you bounce your stems, it will print the audio files for you. <clears throat> uh, but you cannot, it won't print the MIDI information into there. You can't revert back. Um, you can always import them into your track with the option over here. Uh, so it's not like it goes away, but if you were going to send it to someone else, like if you're going to send it to someone else, if, if somebody was writing a song and they're like, hey, can you do some drum programming for me? Or maybe you haven't. Maybe you're the guy in the neighborhood that has the electronic drum kit and you were a drummer, but you have kids that are sleeping above you and you really miss playing drums because it was awesome and you know you felt good when you did it. So you bought a, an electronic drum kit. Now you can add those tracks in and then print your stems to send to your now client who is asking you to drum. Oh, sorry, that was bad. That was bad. So this is another way to do it, is you can just go into here and you would need to do channels. If we did tracks, tracks is associated with this. And so you would only get a stereo drum. That's why when we click it, we're only seeing this. We're seeing my vocal channel, which is empty because I know nothing, just an empty shell of a meat popsicle. Or the kick, this is tracks. It's associated with this channels. It's associated with these guys down here. So that's why I can pick kick, snare, toms, overheads, room, para. Parallel compression. That's what that one is. So you would do channels, right? That is a few different ways to multi out your drums. Uh, so you can do pro processing later. You know, whether you want to, um, let's redo. Hey, yeah, because it already did it. I can redo real quick, but now I can go in. I'm not worried about these guys, so I'm just going to make them ugly yellow so they stand out. <laughs> oh, actually, no, these guys should be yellow. Eh, it doesn't matter. Ugly yellow. Now I can go in and I can do whatever kind of processing I want. I want to go into here. All of these guys are going to get uh, the SSL J because why not, right? I'm working with the audio files and now I can mix it on an SSLJ. My kick channel, let's just randomize all of them. Yes, 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 I know. And so now all of my drums. There's no real processing going on. There's a little bit of harmonic saturation that's going on because of this. But I can go in and process these things now. Let me catch up with you guys. I'm going to go like this to do that. Uh, -boo 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 -boo. Making the work for the like. Yeah. Uh, that was me with the like. Ba -ba -ba. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm catching up a little bit. DJ Big Red. So everything you just did, can you explain? Can you do it with the slate SSD5 um, with the expansion packs? Yes, it would be the exact same way. I can pull it open in here if you want. Uh, bus is yellow. It's my bust. Drums. Get it? Brian King, how can I have an external audio editor command for editing files within S1? 
how can I have an external audio editor command? So, whoop. Are you looking to do like edits on a window like this? Or are you talking like sam like editing samples before you put it into like sample one or uh, impact or something like that? Let me know, Brian. Uh, went to school on a bus and all of them were yellow. Yeah, you go. Uh, uh, the short bus, eh? Go! <laughs> Yeah, with tinted windows, but it was yellow. And it got you where you needed to go, even though you didn't pay attention, you're too busy napping in class, waking up with binder rings all down your face. Wait, who are we talking about now? Brian Sink says, during. So, the, Brian, does this window equate to what you're looking for? Because what you could do is if you're working on stuff, and I'm going to close my browser real quick, is I could pop this out to be its own window, and then I could hit F3 and still have the mixer open. So if I needed to go in and do any kind of like fine edits, I can go in here and I still have these windows all open. Is that what you're talking about? I hope it is, maybe. Within S1 project. Project is something different in Studio One. That's the mastering page. Um, the new. Hmm. Uh, I was programming assembly language during English class in science high school, and teachers loved me. Thanks. Uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that this is what Brian was talking about. So yeah. F2 will open your edit window and the little arrow, boop, this guy, which might be, nope, it's not under my face. It's it's over here. Uh, there. <laughs> this little arrow will pop it out. Don't mind that. It's because I'm zooming in while I'm trying to hit it. Uh, that will pop the window out and then the little down arrow will put it back in and then you can pin these windows just like you would for like your plug-in windows. So get back over there. Um, hit me with some question, guys. Uh, we, we had some fun. We did some things. Uh, I can take all of these guys now, pack them into a folder like I would usually do. Call them drums. Give them a bus. Bus goes. Do the mix bus. Don't mind all of these guys. These are the MIDI channels. So I'm just going to hide these ones real quick. I don't need to see those. Expand these guys out. And let's go SSL bus comp. And let's just have some like silly, ridiculous fun. Because why not, right? We're doing things and stuff. We can have fun with our drums. Drum bus first, please. fun we're doing things and stuff um okay i mean to truly edit the file like audition oh you're talking on a file or soundforge uh an ara linked external audio editor no brian i'm sorry to say i don't think that something like that exists or if it does i am not aware of it it may be something that's in the works but i don't think that it is uh sonic foundry then sony yeah uh sound forge was my thing back in the day yeah so in studio one it's non-destructive editing if you're looking for something that like actually edits the file um then you would need to have some other kind of thing or do your edits in here and then export it as a new file and then pull it back in which is a few more steps than you probably want to do so I'm sorry, Brian, that kind of doesn't exist, or at least I don't know of it. 
Uh, music to motion i might need your help soon to clean up some vocals or show me some things so uh i will hit you up yes of course please do um i've got too many projects going on right now so finishing those first hey that's awesome to hear that you're busy put the tape effect on the bus so the wheels on the bus go round and round why the heck not I was singing, but the ducker is working, and you probably didn't hear it. Or maybe you did. Who knows? Multi-track. Uh, 15 ips. But there's your wheels on the bus. <laughs> So I think we're just having fun at this point. If you guys have any questions, by all means, put them in. Um, I enjoy answering your questions, and, and hopefully you guys have learned some new things, and it's in, enlightened you into maybe some things about drum programming. I know this is an extraordinarily extensive, um, because it's not like we're writing a song. We're literally just kind of having fun and doing things, which that in itself is fun, right? Right? Right. A little bit of cut on the, the kick drum. And that's what we're... reverb um if you have let's just make a random effects channel i personally use uh buses but let's go with an effects channel because whatever let's go with a reverb let's go room reverb right and let's send our drums to it because why not you guys didn't hear that Crazy, right? We don't need all that. We just need a little bit. Let's sidechain it out of the way of when the drums are hitting. So I'm going to put a compressor on after my effect. And I'm going to, just for ridiculous sakes, I'm going to make a hard knee and drop this down. Let's do fast attack and a relatively fast release. Now, the sidechaining thing is I can come up to here, I can activate sidechain, or I can just hit the arrow and say, well, you know what? I want it to be triggered by the kick drum. Whatever. Right? So the kick drum is doing its thing. It's going to send a signal into this compressor. So whenever it's hitting, it is going to push the signal out of the way.
not a not a great example but let's re make that release ridiculous let's go with uh 800 something something milliseconds had the loop on but listen at the very end do you hear the reverb bloom up that's how you sidechain is you you need some kind of signal going into it and studio one makes it easy with just the little sidechain thing here so if you're working in studio one version 5 every dynamic processor has sidechain built in including the fat channel so like your limiters, your multiband dynamics, your compressor, gates, expanders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They all have side chains built in now. Brian, you're great. Lost sound for a few there. Uh, yeah. That's not the song I was referencing. When it works. Oh, hang on. I'm catching up. Same question above. Yep. I think I got to it. Darren, uh, I have an Icon X6 MIDI keyboard. It runs as uh, two external devices, one for keys and one for the controls. The controls part runs on Mackie Huey. How do I customize some of the buttons from the default? Darren, I'm going to tell you that I need to do some research. I can't answer that right now. I need to do some research. I am not the biggest keyboard controller surface guy, so I don't want to tell you MIDI learning inside Studio One is actually pretty smart. So I would look up a couple of videos about MIDI learning and there there are some that are out there, but I am not the person to answer that right now. And I'm sorry. If I put the at symbol and then just start typing my name, if you're on a PC, it's definitely way easier. Um, it gives me a nice little highlight thing and then I can see your questions earlier. Um, Brian King, if you're on mobile, uh, you need to type the whole name. So at Tim Talk Audio. Uh, and then also, you know, music to motion, uh, he's going to let me know if, if I missed anything, usually. Can't you hear me knocking? -na 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 -na. Your audio isn't working. What? It's, no, I see it. And maybe, maybe it was, I think I was maybe talking while something else was happening. Because I have the, the ducker on. It gets me out of the way. The Lord, the Lord, should I let him in? Yep. Uh, that's not the song I was referencing, but it works. Uh, you didn't pay the gerbil to keep running on his net. No, nope, nope, didn't definitely didn't do that. Uh, did a techno remix of that in the '90s to share with you. Yeah, good, got it, cool, Brian. I'm I'm glad that this uh, this answered your question. Actually, I'm talking to you guys, so I can do this. Um, and to do that, I just slice of each bar of the song, pull them into acid, and align them. Ugh, to... man, that sounds awful, Brian. That is what you were talking about. So yeah, any kind of like dynamic things you want to do. I mean drums isn't the greatest example to do that in but you saw what it was we had a very long release so when the kick wasn't hitting or it stopped hitting it then allowed the reverb to bloom up but when it was hitting and we had a very long release it just kept that reverb out of the way so that's really all you need to do is whatever kind of processing you need to do you are doing good you know, whatever processing you're trying to do that you want to get out of the way just put a compressor at the end and have it triggered by the thing you're doing so a really great example is vocals if you want like a nice vocal delay and you can put it on for the whole time dial it in it's like ludicrous like a ridiculous amount but you really want it to bloom when they're not singing follow that delay with a compressor side chained and triggered by the lead vocal itself when the lead vocal is going it will feed the delay and it will be in there it's just going to be greatly reduced depending on the, your ratio and your threshold and the amount of gain reduction that you're going to get um you know something that you would see over on these controls um so dynamic delay dynamic reverbs things like that um so just follow it up with a compressor side chain it from the signal that you are sending to it and then get it out of the way or side chain it by a, a different signal it doesn't matter what you send to it uh it, it'll it'll listen to that and push the stuff out of the way um so yeah that's a very common thing is, is vocals send it to a delay or a reverb um when they're going you won't hear it that much but when they stop it'll bloom up 
You just have to dial in that release time. Um, another insider tip for helping clean this up, which we could do, I'm going to turn the compressor off so you can still listen to the, the room reverb. Let me go into here. And I'm going to throw in a pro EQ and I'm going to put it before my reverb. Um, generally speaking, this is called the Abbey Road trick. But what you're going to do is you're just going to slam off the low end and you're going to put it way higher than you think. So like I'm just going to go up to like 600 and you're going to crush down the top end. And for here, we're going to go, these are drums. Uh, so let's go, you know, with seven and a half K ish. So this is really going to clean up that reverb. I'm going to turn it off and we're going to listen to our ridiculous reverb again because everybody loves ridiculous reverb. And we'll do the, the last two bars. EQ is off. Crazy reverb. Ready? Really long tail. Re uh, EQ on. really cleaned it up got rid of a lot of the kick that was feeding there so you have to dial into taste maybe you do want a little bit of that low end kick going in but it's really going to clean it up and now we can refine it even more we can find the attack of those toms or the snare push it harder or even just drop it out cleaned up reverb right really nice you can do this for your delays too especially when you're doing something like this on uh, a vocal really really nice then you turn your compressor back on that's everything funny you start eq very similar to what i do on those yes you just you, you go crazy and then you dial into taste and honestly that's, that's that is a good way to train your ear on different things is you you push it harder than you think you should you listen to what it's doing and then you dial into taste like uh let's go to our snare track let's push it harder than we should and i'm just going to go back to the beginning and i'm going to mute the effects track for now um but let's listen to compression i'm gonna go crazy th uh ratio fast attack and release okay so you know let's listen in solo
it was soloed. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Something was soloed. Um, sweep it around. That's how you can find things you don't like. Dump them out. Uh, no audio. I know. I, I saw it not working. My, that was my bad. Um, sweep around. Find it. Once you're more trained, you can be like, oh, you know what? That sounds like that ugly 4K that nobody likes. Let me go to 4K. Cut some of it out. You don't even need to go too crazy. I'm looking over here. You can't see it. It doesn't matter. Uh, Tim, how do I know when to use a bus versus a VCA? Um, <clears throat> I'm very quickly going to do this, but maybe we'll do like buses versus VCA on our live stream next week. Um, a VCA is a voltage controlled amplifier. And what it does is it will proportionally change the faders that you have linked to it. Um, yeah, next week we can we can definitely do VCA versus bus in our live stream. We'll kind of touch upon it right now. Um, so when you're using a VCA, you are going to proportionally change the faders going to your mix bus. And everything essentially is going to some kind of bus, whether it's your main bus, also known as your mix bus, or your drum bus. Um, <clears throat> if you have a VCA, it is... It is one fader, but it'll proportionally grab wherever your mix is, and it will keep that same ratio of faders the same whether you go up or down. So you'll see them kind of go at different speeds. A bus <clears throat> will take everything onto one fader, and what it does is it doesn't control those faders and the mix going into that bus. So the VCA does change what's going in, but the bus is literally just like a master volume for just that stuff. Um, it's not gonna change the, the relationship of things. Uh, it's not gonna change the relationship of your mixes, but it's just like a, a volume of like, here's my drum bus. I want my drums down just a little bit more. Um, if you're using a VC, let's say you're doing bus processing. If you're using a VCA, you are now altering, let's say you're doing some uh, drum bus compression like we were kind of doing before. If you use a VCA on those things going to a drum bus, but uh, and you start sliding around your drums, and you're like, oh, that's too loud. So I go to your VCA and you turn it down. You're now altering what's feeding into the drum bus compressor. So you will probably get less compression. Vice versa, if you're pushing up, you're going to get more compression. And VCA is volume control, but it's a relative volume control. A bus is going to be post that processing. So a VCA, you can't put plugins and stuff on. A bus, you can. So if you have your drum mix and you think it's cool and you have your drum bus and you want to do some drum bus compression, go ahead and do that. When you dial it in, it's going to be that. The only way it's going to change is if you go to one of your individual channel faders and mess with your mix. But when you have the drum bus fader and you're moving that one up and down, that is strictly a post-processing volume control of just that stuff. So I think that's a really great subject. I'm actually going to write it down. Where's my little... Oh, I lost my finger. Oh, goodness. All of my sticky notes went away. So I'm going to write it down. Uh, VCA versus bus stream if i don't write it down i'm not going to remember <clears throat> and, and and but that's a brilliant idea let's do that next week we can dive a little bit deeper in we'll kind of pull open a mix and, and have some fun so uh yes bus uh bus has effects on it but think of it as a volume control uh and with these streams, I tell Tim to go over this topic again. And he'll have a special one for this part. Yes! Smartly done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you saw. I wrote it down. Poorly, but I wrote it down. Next week, VCAs versus bus. And we'll have some other stuff in there, too. So come back next week. We're going to go VCAs versus bus. What's going to work in your workflow? And we'll we'll learn some things. We'll maybe I'll find like some kind of song somewhere and I'll do like a real quick rough mix of something and then I'll I'll show you 
on some bus pro on some bus compression is probably the best way to show you how if you take a VCA it's going to change what the bus compressor does but if you take the bus and just kind of change its volume it's a big volume thing Thomas a good afternoon to you for anybody that is uh in the U.S. or uh i guess in this hemisphere good evening if you're on the other one good morning or good afternoon i hope you guys have a great day i hope you have a great weekend thanks for coming out and hanging out with me i really do hope that you guys learned something thank you if you're a subscriber thank you if you've done uh, some super chats thank you if you shared the videos that helps too because i think let me check before we were not at seven thousand. i'm just going to do a quick check on my phone and see where we are we're definitely closer. We're at 6,980. We're 20 off. So share these videos, share the channel, help me get past that 7,000 mark and even further. You guys are really what drives this channel. I appreciate you all. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week.